everybody, what's going on? I'm Fabian Calvo, founder and president of the real estate investment firm, The Note House, and creator of the Resourceful Real Estate Academy, where I teach you how to tap into the trillions of dollars in toxic debt and properties across the country from basically the comfort of your own home, never having to leave home, because this is a virtual market. This is what makes uh, the Resourceful Real Estate Academy different than every other program out there, because those programs you know, nothing wrong about them. They basically teach you how to tap into your local market. But this is truly a virtual market. It's gone virtual and that trend will only continue. Those of us that are on the front lines of that, I think will prosper the most in this uh, new age of real estate investing. But first let's talk about how to wholesale properties. It's a question I get a lot. And there's a lot of, you know, misconceptions about wholesaling property, investing properties. A lot of investors that are just getting into real estate investing think that when they buy a property, they basically need to buy it, rehab it, and then resell it. And it's very tempting for someone to approach a distressed piece of real estate with that in mind that, hey, if I fix it up, I'll be able to unlock even more of its value and I'll make even more money on the resale. Well, let's take a look at what those numbers actually look at because someone like myself who's done probably over a thousand of these or very close to a thousand flips, um, across the country, both on notes and on homes, you know, I know these numbers like the back of my hand. And I know really usually what ends up happening and how many of the unforeseen expenses eat into your bottom line, and that's critical for you to know about. Let's take a look and let's say you're buying a home that's $100,000, right? And let's say at $100,000, that purchase price is a steal, right? Because let's say the uh, the value of the real estate is, let's say, 200,000, or in this case, actually, let's say it's worth 150,000. You're buying it for 100,000. So immediately you look at this deal and you say, well, there's a, there's a $50,000 potential profit. So a 50K potential profit. That looks wonderful, right? But let's say in order to get it to that 150 mark, you know, you might need to put in, uh, put, let's say in this case, $7,000 of rehab. Now that rehab is going to take you, let's say 30 days to get it complete. Now you're also going to have to factor in your financing cost. If you're implementing one of the many no money down strategies, let's say you're using a hard money lender, or let's just say you've brought in an other investor that's going to lend you the money. And let's say you're paying, you know, uh, uh, let's say you're paying 12% on your loan, plus you're paying him maybe three points on the back end. So this also is eating into your overall profit as well. Because remember, he lent you 100,000. In many cases, people need to put up the rehab cost themselves if you're dealing with a hard money lender. Sometimes, you know, it just depends on the relationship you build. Mostly hard money lenders will have you put up the rehab costs yourself. They want to make sure you have some skin in the game. That's why I personally like to find real estate investors or other investors out there that will lend me the money to go out and buy these properties. Because typically I can get, or, or almost always, I get 100% of the uh, of the purchase price and also expenses on top of that because I'm still able to deliver them a great return. But in this case, you have 12% uh, expenses. It's gonna take you 30 days to rehab it, plus you're gonna pay three points. But also, you're gonna have selling expenses and there's gonna be taxes and things like that. And let's add in, let's say another, you know, three grand on the selling expenses. Now, what typically happens here is that the purchase price now of 150, let's say you bought it at 100, right? You've put $7,000 in to fix it up, so you're, so you're into it for 107, and you're going to be selling it for $50,000. So really, you're looking at a profit of about $43,000 minus your carrying costs and expenses. Now, this is based on you completing the rehab in 30 days and you being able to sell it in the next 30 days. So really, you're gonna be holding this property, best case scenario, for roughly 60 days that you're gonna be paying interest charges on and points on the loan, right? So that's gonna cost you. Now, if you hire a real estate agent to help you sell, you're gonna have uh, the expense of selling it. So let's say, you know, 6% of 150, you're going to be looking at around 
you know, let's say seven grand, six grand in that neighborhood, or you know, maybe if you have an agent that will double end the deal and do it at a discount, you can get it for seven grand. But actually, this selling expense, I'm gonna put seven K, three to seven K, right? Of, of selling expense. That's if you get 150. I can tell you from experience, and again, flipping hundreds and hundreds of properties, very rarely do you get the list price. In fact, most of the time, the property sells anywhere between three to 10% of list price, so, or I should I say 90 to 93% of list price. So in this case, let's say that we're gonna discount the purchase price by another 5%. So we're gonna be looking at uh, roughly, let's just say that we're gonna say a, a sale price of 145 is what you're going to, uh, you're gonna be getting. So, notice that we went from buying the property that we thought was 150, buying it for 100, right? And we think, you know, hey, there's a $50,000 profit. This is amazing, I, I'm so excited about it. But notice everything that's happened so far. And this is really kind of like how it usually goes. A lot of times these models will vary, and many times it won't take just 60 days, it might take you 90 days to sell the property, right? So we've gone from a property that was 150 that we thought we could sell for 150. Now we're at 145, so that's $5,000 less of our profit. We've had to fix it up and spend $7,000. So that the 7K plus the 5% discount in price, we're at around $12,000. And then plus your selling expense, let's just say it's going to cost you $5,000. Total all that up, you're at $18,000. $18,000 in expenses plus your carrying costs, which let's say we could add another three grand on top of that, or, or even more, I'm just going using these numbers right up from the top of my head. But let's say we're looking at $20,000. Now I haven't even gotten to the most important point of what I see beginner real estate investors and even, and even really more experienced real estate investors, they fall into this trap, one of the most common traps, I don't hear anyone talking about it in real estate investing that is just critical to not fall into because it directly impacts the profitability that you can get, not just from this particular deal, but from many other deals. But again, to recap the numbers here, we bought a property for $100,000, we thought it was worth 150. But come to find out after rehab, after everything else, factoring in the time, it's actually 20,000 roughly in expenses that's coming off that bottom line. So we're really looking at a profit of about $30,000. Again, that's if we can sell it in 60 days. That's if we can sell it for roughly 5% discounted off the purchase price. You know, so there's a lot of variables here that come into play. I've seen deals where, hey, you know, the profit was gonna be 50 grand, it ends up being $20,000 because during the rehab, there was maybe things that you know, were overlooked, or maybe there was, you know, once the drywall was opened up, there was all kinds of other problems that needed to be taken care of, right? Especially older homes. When you begin to remove kitchen cabinets and you know, do full-blown remodels, there's a lot of things that come up that were not expected to come up, and that really, again, takes away from your bottom line. So, what do you do about something like this? Well, let me add another expense here that maybe won't come up in a dollar amount, but it will ultimately come up in a huge dollar amount. So one of the biggest things that I see real estate investors, this trap that I see them fall into, is that a novice real estate investor, or even like somebody who's already has house flips under their belt, they will find this deal for 100 grand, grand be totally thrilled, and then all of the prospecting efforts that they've put into finding this deal will automatically come to a screeching halt, They'll focus all their time on flipping this property, and then, you know, 60 days pass, let's say even 90 days pass, yes, they may have made 30 grand on the deal, but now they have to, a couple of months, trying to find another deal, because they've stopped doing what any real real estate investor should be doing, which is always, always, always prospecting for new deals. Always. I don't care if you found the biggest deal of your life, that should not stop all of the different marketing, all the different prospecting uh, calendars and prospecting methods that you're implementing to find great real estate deals. But this is typically what happens. They get stuck in a rehab, right? They think they're gonna make all kinds of money. They end up making about half of what they thought they were gonna make. And a lot of time has passed. And when they finally do sell the property, they almost literally have to restart 
their business again. Now, that would be the equivalent of me having a furniture store. And, you know, I have my most expensive piece of furniture and the client walks in and they're going to buy that expensive piece of furniture. And let's say it's going to, you know, from the time they buy, maybe they're going to pay half up front. And then, you know, uh, they're going to pay the other half upon delivery in that period of time, maybe two weeks to pass. And let's say I just close down the furniture store. I'm like, yep, no more customers are going to come in. I'm just going to focus on selling this one piece of furniture and that's it. Well, of course you would never do that. That doesn't make any sense. But real estate investors do that all the time when they find a deal they think is the greatest deal ever. Let's look at a much better way and a much better in another method. And this is the method I tell you that I operate on. It's the method that the most uh, successful real estate investors that I work on at this level, this is what real real estate investors do. And this is wholesaling real estate, right? Again, wholesaling real estate basically means that you don't rehab, you don't do any of the above, you basically turn it and burn it. You buy it, you resell it immediately, and you do it as quickly as you possibly can. Let me give you these other example. We have a home that we believe is worth $150,000. That's what we believe the retail value is, right? We buy it for 100 grand. Now, this is our, this is what we buy it, right? Again, going back to the old example, we thought, hey, $50,000 in profit, I'm gonna go on the dance floor, I'm so excited, right? Somebody who wholesales looks at this deal and says, okay, I'm gonna sell this home or this property at a price where the person that comes along to buy it, they're gonna make, I have to leave some room in there for them. So let's say I turn around and I sell it for 110. 110 off cash. I don't focus with the rehabs. I don't waste any of my time. I don't have to deal with selling expenses. I don't even many times, if you implement this model, have to even deal with financing expenses. And I'll tell you why. Because if I find this deal here for $100,000, right? And I've done my homework in the market that I'm investing in, and I have what I call best buyers, other investors that I know will buy this property all day long, buy it, fix it up, and they'll either rent it or they will try to sell it for 150. I know that as soon as I contract this property for $100,000, as soon as, I know that as soon as I contract this property for $100,000, I'm immediately going to my best buyers to either assign them the contract or just double close the deal and let them do the rehab. If I need to bring in an investor or a partner that's gonna lend me the $100,000, in this particular situation, I could maybe just get away with paying a few points. Let's say, you know, I've paid anywhere between three and five points, depending on the loan amount, sometimes a little bit higher. It just depends what, how, how big the loan amount you're borrowing. But if you implement a strategy like Doe for a day, where you have an investor that basically gives you the 100 grand just for a day until you reflip the property, well then all of a sudden I'm making $10,000. But I'm making that money in, let's say anywhere from two to four days, which is saving me off the old model. It's saving me at minimum, it's gonna save me 60 days plus my prospecting, right? And everything else that's going into finding these properties is not stopping, it continues, it doesn't stop. I keep moving forward. So conceivably, I can find three or four deals like this a month, right? What's stopping me from finding three or four deals like this a month or more? Obviously nothing, I mean, in any metro market, and I'm investing currently in about 26 different markets across the country, and I can tell you, every single one has an abundance of real estate deals. This idea that there's not enough inventory is just pure baloney. And you know, if you've seen my deal source pyramid video, I basically crack the secret, reveal the secret of how you can get into the 1% of real estate investors, or at least the 10%, I think more probably like the one to 2% of real estate investors in the country 
within a couple of days. Because again, doing strategies and performing at a level that most investors don't perform at. Most novice to even experienced investors make the mistake of doing the rehab. Think about what that costs you. Six, at least 60 days in, in costs, right? Or 60 days of your time. You've stopped doing your marketing like most uh, investors end up doing because they're so focused on the rehab. This 60 day model is best case scenario. But in this new model here, in two to four days, you flip the property, you make your $10,000, you make your $10,000 pro property. And the idea that a dollar today is worth a lot more than a dollar, we knew, we know this by all the inflation that's being caused by the Federal Reserve, a dollar today is worth a lot more than it will be a dollar next week or definitely 60 to 90 days from now. This is the key right here for wholesaling property, for flipping properties, it's not to rehab them, it's not to get bogged down, and I'm not saying a rehab is bad. I mean, you know, in some markets, rehabbing works if that's what your model is. Let me give you an example. Let me give you an example. In some high-end real estate markets, you have, you know, people that may buy a home for half a million dollars and they spend 100 grand into it and then they'll rehab it. That's their model, fine. You know, they've been successful with that. I personally think, especially in the market that we're in today, again, this is why most real estate investors end up losing money. In the markets we are today that are so volatile that anything could happen, I'm about turning and burning these properties in two to four days, getting them off my books, moving my proceeds and profits into a new deal or moving my investors' money into a new deal, protecting them, protecting myself, and making my money now instead of hoping to make you know, 30 to 50 grand, 60 to 90 days from now. Anything could happen. Uh, you know, again, one, one more point that I'll say about this. I remember in 2008, when we were selling uh, developments like crazy. I remember within one to two weeks, sales came to a screeching halt. And we all know what happened back then. You know, prices fell off a cliff. So markets can change very quickly, especially markets like we are in today, where, you know, are totally manipulated by the Fed. Uh, with the you know inflation running wild, so that retail price of 150 that we thought we could get now could change to 125 in, in a couple of months. I mean, in a month it could change, right? There could be a ton of new inventory that hits the market, or there could be a bunch of other sellers that slash prices. All of a sudden, your 150 is looking like 25, and you might end up losing money on the deal. That's why wholesaling, burning these deals, using no money down strategies is the key to successful real estate investing. I hope this video has been informative. Uh, check out resourcefulrealestateacademy.com. We, of course, have a bunch of free video content on there. My free video training course that walks you through a lot of great opportunities in this market. Also, my uh, real estate uh, investment course that teaches you soup to nuts, not just strategies like this, but everything you need to know to be operating at the top, top, top percentage of real estate investors in America and really the world. I'm Fabian Calvo. Thanks for watching. I'm out.